Let us first recall some very important concepts that we covered in previous video lectures. Each somatic cell in human body contains 46 chromosomes. Each chromosome represents a single, linear double-stranded DNA molecule. They are normally present in relaxed or decondensed form. Chromosomes duplicate before cell division. Mitotic cell division or mitosis takes place in somatic cells. Metaphase of mitosis is the stage in eukaryotic organisms when the chromosomes are in their most condensed form. Therefore, this phase is the best phase to count and study the number and morphology of chromosomes. Here, keep in mind that the structures of chromosomes in mitosis are actually representing the duplicated chromosomes. Each duplicated chromosome consists of two sister chromatids that are attached to each other along their lengths. The specific location at which sister chromatids are tightly attached to each other is called the centromere. Here we need to understand one important point. Each sister chromatid has its own centromere. But, in the duplicated chromosome, they are so tightly bound to each other at the centromeric region that they cannot be distinguished separately. So, we count only one centromere for a duplicated chromosome. That is, till the time sister chromatids are attached to each other. We also learned how to count chromosome number. Suppose, this is a somatic cell. It contains 46 chromosomes. We know that these chromosomes are not visible individually in the cell under normal conditions, since they are not in their condensed form. But for our illustration, we are showing them like this. Each chromosome has a centromere and two arms. If this cell is destined to divide that is, by mitosis, then, it will first undergo chromosome duplication. Again remember that duplicated chromosomes remain tightly bound to each other at the centromeric region. So, chromosome number is still 46. This bond at the centromere of sister chromatids of all chromosomes is maintained till the metaphase stage of mitosis. In metaphase, chromosomes are clearly distinguishable. But keep in mind, the chromosome number in metaphase is still 46. In anaphase, when these sister chromatids of each chromosome separate from each other, then, the chromosome number is 92. That is, double the initial number of chromosomes. Keeping these concepts in mind, let's begin with today's video lecture. Today we will understand. What do we mean by karyotype and homologous chromosomes? You all must have come across this image somewhere in your books. It is a karyotype. Karyotype is a picture of chromosomes in the somatic cell of an individual. Karyotype represents the number and appearance of these chromosomes. Let's understand how karyotype is prepared. Karyotypes are prepared from actively dividing cells. First, the somatic cells are isolated from an individual. Most commonly used somatic cells for the preparation of karyotype are lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell. These cells are then treated with a drug to stimulate mitosis. They are then grown in culture for several days. We know that chromosomes are in their most condensed form at the metaphase stage of mitosis. So, in the next step, these cells are treated with another chemical to arrest mitosis at metaphase. As a result, the cell is now unable to enter anaphase. One example of a chemical that prevents a cell from entering anaphase is colchicine. These cells are then chemically preserved and spread on a microscope slide. They are stained and viewed with a microscope that is equipped with a digital camera. The image of chromosomes is displayed in a computer monitor. A computer software arranges the images of chromosomes pairs according to their appearance. 
that is, by size and shape. Chromosomes are arranged in descending order, that is, starting with the longest chromosome. This resulting order display of chromosomes is called a karyotype. Remember that, each chromosome in karyotype is a duplicated chromosome. That means, each chromosome consists of two sister chromatids joined along their lengths. So, karyotype can be defined as a visual display of pairs of condensed, duplicated chromosomes arranged by size, shape, and banding pattern. It represents the complete set of metaphase chromosomes. In karyotype, you can see that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each pair contains two chromosomes that resemble each other in length, centromere position, and staining pattern. The members of a chromosome pair are called homologous chromosomes or homologs. The term homologous means having the same basic structure. Homologous chromosomes look alike. They also contain the same genes in the same positions along the chromosomes. But, they are not identical. This is because, each homolog of the pair may contain different versions of any particular gene. Different versions of a gene are called allele. There are 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes in humans. Among these, 22 pairs are same in both male and female. These 22 pairs of homologous chromosomes are known as autosomes. The 23rd pair is different in human male and female. As you can see in the image, the two chromosomes of this 23rd pair are designated by letter X. Human females have two X chromosomes. So, it is obvious that this karyotype represents a human female karyotype. Human males have one X and one Y chromosome. And, only small parts of X and Y are homologous. Because they determine an individual's sex, the X and Y chromosomes are called sex chromosomes. Now question here is. Why chromosomes in each human somatic cell occur in pairs? This is because, we inherit one chromosome of a pair from each parent. That means, the 46 chromosomes in our somatic cells are actually, two sets of 23 chromosomes. A maternal set and, a paternal set. So, now it is clear to us that, homologous chromosomes are the chromosomes that have same size and shape and they have same genes in the same position there are 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes in each human somatic cell that means total 46 chromosomes one chromosome of a homologous pair is inherited from mother and one is inherited from father in the next video lecture we will study meiosis and its role in sexual reproduction in humans. Thank you for watching.